गुड आफ्टरनून गुड आफ्टरनून विद्या विकास मंडल सीताराम गोविंद पाटिल आर्ट्स साइंस एंड कॉमर्स कॉलेज साक्री ऑन द ऑकेजन ऑफ द गोल्डन जुबली इयर ऑफ द कॉलेज एंड सेवेंटी फिफ्थ एनिवर्सरी इयर ऑफ इंडियन इंडिपेंडेंस डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जुलॉजी एंड आईक्यूएसी जॉइंटली ऑर्गेनाइज इंटरनेशनल वेबिनार ऑन बायोसिस्टमैटिक्स एंड एनिमल बायोडायवर्सिटी on this occasion on behalf of department of zoology and internal quality assurance cell i heartily welcome all the respected dignitaries patrons chief guests chairperson guest speakers uh, honorable national advisory board committee members teachers research scholars students and youtube participants once again i heartily welcome all of you and i request dr deepak nagrale sir to display and the lamp lamp lightning ceremony as well as saraswati vandana dr nagarai sir सब लगा YouTube लाओ जी शेयर वाला लगा thank you sir with the blessings of what is saraswati we are going to start this international webinar now i would like to request professor ss S. patoy sir convener of this webinar to give his introductory speech as well as introduction of the chief guests honorable professor dr ss S. patoy sir thank you sir on occasion of the golden jubilee year of the college and 75th anniversary of indian independence our department of zoology going to organize international webinar on biosystematics and animal biodiversity for this webinar i welcome to our chief of patrons honorable abha saheb suraj ji patil secretary of our vidya vikas mandal satri honorable to mangal tai saheb suraj ji patil president of our vidya vikas mandal satri honorable bhaiya saheb chandrajit ji patil vice president of our vidya vikas mandal satri i also welcome to today's function inaugurator 
Honorable Professor B. Power Sahib, Pro Vice Chancellor of our KBC North Mount University, Jalga, our chief guest of today's function, Honorable Principal Dr. Digan Toruna Sahib, Administrative Officer of our Vidya Class Mandal Sakri, our Principal and Studies Function Chairperson, Dr. R.R. sir. I also welcome to today's guest speakers, Honorable Dr. Vishwanath Higle Sahib, Scientist E, Western Ghat Regional Center, Koji Kode, Kerala. Another speaker, Dr. Aparna Kalawate Ma'am, Scientist D, JDSI Western Regional Center, Pune, and third speaker, Dr. Vijayji Barve, Visiting Scientist and Postdoctoral Research Fellow, Florida Museum of Natural History, University of Florida, USA. I also welcome to organizing committee for this webinar. Our Vice Principal, Dr. Anand Patil, sir, our HOD and uh, Organizing Secretary, Professor L.B. Power, sir. Today's functions, IQC Coordinator, Dr. Naneshwar Chavan, sir. Dr. Pradeep Rathod, Coordinator of Webinar. Professor Ibilas Paura, Co-Coordinator of this webinar. I also welcome most of our National Advisory Committee members, especially Dr. M.G. Raghunathan from Chennai, Professor Subhash Pandey from Bhopal, Professor Prakash Joshi from Haridwar, Dr. S.S. Jadav, JDSI from Hyderabad, Professor V.L. Maheshwari from NMU, Jalgao, Professor R.T. Mazan, sir, from Jalgao, Dr. S.R. Pate, JDSI, WRC, Pune, Professor Punita Bharadwaj, ma'am, from Baruch, our leader, Professor Anilji Patil, Raver, Professor Prakash Lohar, our BOA chairman from Chopra, Principal Sandhya Surune Ma'am from Yawal College, Professor Ajit Karse from Chalajgao College, Professor B.B. Waikar from Aurangabad University, Mrs. Vihar Kakade, Buldhana College, Dr. Anita Patil Ma'am, Panchoti College Nasik, Dr. Vikram Kakulte Sir, KTHM College Nasik, Dr. Ajay Vivande, Yola College, Dr. Chetan Jawan, Chetan Jawde Sir, Arvakya College Nasik, and most of the national advisory members. I also welcome to the local organizing committee all this. Thank you, sir. I'm going to introduce the today's function inaugurator, Honorable. Deep or sad. Before that, I discuss here some point regarding the introduction. Biosystematics is the taxonomic application of geoecology, whereas taxonomy is the science of naming, describing, and classifying organisms and include all living of the world. The current taxonomic system now has eight levels in its hierarchy. From lowest to highest, they are species, genus, family, order, class, phylum, kingdom, and domain. The biodiversity is the biological variety and variability of the life on the earth. It is the measure of variation at the genetic, species, and ecosystem level. Biodiversity is the term used to describe the enormous variety of the life on the earth, it can be used more specifically to refer to all of the species in one region or the ecosystem. Biodiversity refer to every living things, including plants, bacteria, animal, and human being also. Our planet Earth is fulfilled with the millions of organisms but till today, hardly 20 to 22 percent work is done in concern with their taxonomical survey. So, lots of work remains in this field. 
to secure the future of earth and also the future of the young researchers i means biologist must look toward this field Thank you, sir. I am pleased to introduce today's inaugurator, Professor B. Power Sahib. Presently, Professor Power Sahib is Pro Vice Chancellor, Professor and Head of School of Computer Science, KBC North Mount University, Jalgaon. He has 33 years of teaching as well as research experience and 30 years of the administrative experience. He has 204 publications, including books, articles in the books, journals, and the research papers. Under his guidance, still today, 15 students awarded PhD degree and at present, 10 are registered for their PhD. Sir, sir complicated four major research projects from UGC at SAP DRS. For this project, he received a grant of rupees 4.75 crore from the UGC. He worked on various bodies like RRC chairman, ex-dean of our science and technology faculty, and ex-member of the management council. He also worked as office sitting registrar of our university. He visited at USA, China, and West Indies for attending and presenting research paper in international conferences. So, with thanks to Professor B. Power Sahib, a dynamic personality, for accepting our invitation as inaugurator of today's international webinar. It's my duty to introduce. Today's chairperson, our principal, Dr. R.R. Aire, sir. Our principal, Dr. Rajendraji Aire, has 35 years of teaching and 26 years of the research experience. He is head of physics department of our college. Under his guidance, yet a student received a PhD degree and five are presently working. He published 65 research papers in the reported journals, as well as 20 textbooks are written and published. He worked on various college academic committees and also worked as the vice principal. He was awarded best NSS program officer mm -hmm. and presently awarded as the best principal of the year by district NGO forum and principal forum. Principal Ajinderji Aire worked as the Senate member, BOS member, as well as various committee in our university. He is a social man also, always engaged in the social activities. Presently, he is a secretary of Marathi Vidyan Parishad and Andhasadda Nirmalan Samiti of the Sakri Dasip. With these few words, I'll stop here. Again, welcome and thanking you once again. Jai Hind, Jai Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Due to some unavoidable circumstances, our inaugurator of the webinar, Honorable Professor B.B. Pawar, sir, conveys the message 
for not attending this webinar and he also asked us to read his message his blessings for the webinar hence with the permission of the chairperson i am going to read the message by honorable professor b v power sir honorable vice um, pro vice chancellor of kavitri bahna vai chaudhary north maharashtra university jalgaon honorable management of vidya vikas mandal sakri resource persons of the webinar chief guest dr d l toroni administrative officer vidya vikas mandal sakri chairperson of the webinar principal dr r r raire convener of the webinar professor s s patroi entire organizing team teachers research scholars and student participants good afternoon one and all i am pleased to be here as an inaugurator of the international webinar at the outset his message suggests that i declare that the international webinar on biosystematics and animal biodiversity is inaugurated the academic year 2021-22 is the golden jubilee year of the yg patil college sakri and this is also the 75th year of indian independence on this glorious moment yg patil college organizes such an academic and research oriented activity in the form of international webinar for 50 years yg patil arts science and commerce college has provided enriching and life changing educational opportunities for the students from tribal and rural area the college is known for pursuance pursuance of excellence in the field of higher education for 50 years in the service of students the college always strive to be focused on the holistic development of the students the college has created a nice ambience in the field of education by catering to the needs of diverse section of the society over the past 50 years the dedication of college administration faculty staff have enabled the college to be on the forefront of promoting higher education and increasing access to higher education for overall development of the students the college always leads to organize various student centric programs and initiatives i hope the college will continue its legacy of educating young minds and enriching the society regarding the theme of the webinar biosystematics is the taxonomic application of gynecology it is the study of genotypic and phenotypic variation of species in relation to the environments in which they occur it is the union of taxonomy and genetics whereas the taxonomy is the science of naming describing and classifying organisms and it includes all plants animals and microorganisms of the world the current taxonomic system now has eight level as described in the introductory speech in its hierarchy from lowest to highest they are species genus family order class phylum kingdom and domain presently there are 8 million organisms exist on this planet and nearly 2 million organisms recorded scientifically hence a large portion of organisms is yet to be explored so this domain is full of scientific probabilities organizing such webinar is the directive step for the students as well as research scholars to grab the research opportunities in the area of this domain on this occasion i congratulate principal dr r r aire sir and his entire team for organizing international webinar on such wonderful topic thank you very much uh on behalf of organizing committee and ag patil college i heartily thankful to honorable professor bv power sir 
for being with us in the form of this spaces they have blessed he has blessed this webinar by conveying us a constructive message for the webinar i am thankful on behalf of the organizing uh, committee now i request honorable principal dr r r aire sir to present his present presidential speech of this inaugural function of international webinar <coughs> Uh, greetings to all our patrons vidya vikas mandal secretary honorable abha saheb suresh ram rao patil president mangala tai suresh patil vice president bhaiya saheb chandrajit patil today's inaugurator pro high chancellor of kavitri bhaina bhai choudhary north maharashtra university jalgaon honorable professor bv pawar sir chief guest uh, doc, principal dr dl dorone resource person of the webinars dr vishwanath hegde from kerala dr aparna kalwate madam from pune dr vijay barve from usa convener of the webinar professor ss patole sir head of the department professor ab pawar sir entire organizing team teachers research scholars and advisory committee members of this webinar all the participants good afternoon i am pleased to chair the inaugural function of the international webinar uh, on bio systematic and animal biodiversity organized by department of uh, zoology uh, vidya vikas mandals sg patil college sakri the academic year 2021 and 22 is the golden jubilee year of the our college and this is the 75th year of the indian independence yes i would like to tell you the proud moment that on this day that the loknete ramrao dada saheb ramrao sitaram patil started the educational moment in 1971 many great intellectual led are the alumni of this institutions and will do it in the future in the course of the time our college has participated some uh, practices some innovative in his innovative initiatives every year we celebrate wildlife week which is a weekly event celebrated annually in india and it is uh, celebrated from 2nd october to 8th of the october the main reason behind the celebrating this day is the, to accelerate the awareness of uh, conservation of the wildlife among the people by the central and state government environmental list and activists teachers and other community india has the large depository of organism of Uh, various species so the conservation and nurturing of these uh, natural resources are extremely important for us this weekly event is uh, celebrated every year with the different themes of work from different aspect of the same issue and all of us know that we have a large forest cover which is consist of the uh, large species so it is the uh, important for us to celebrate uh, to it it too india has always been home to wide variety of the live animals and their various species and it has uh, been our will that has helped us in maintaining our environment from time to time but the human 
has uh, become uh, insensitive and greedy about them. It has uh, hunted them for his uh, benefit. As a result, we have lost many organisms and their major species. However, uh, their uh, came uh, when human being realize that the their prevention and uh, nurturing is uh, extremely important. Perhaps uh, that's why an event like uh, National Wildlife Week was celebrated and that could work in this area. At the end, I hope that we all will try to protect our nature and wildlife at any cost. Thank to inaugurator and resource persons for accepting our invitation. Thank you. Thank you, Daya Sahib. Now, after the inaugural function, let us move to the sessions. And for the first session, we have guest speaker, Honorable Dr. Vishwanath Ji Hegde, sir. Before that, I would like to request Dr. Deepak Nagarai, sir, to introduce Honorable Dr. Vishwanath Ji Hegde. Over to you, Dr. Nagarai, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Chavan, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, myself, Dr. Deepak Vasanth Nagarai. Uh, I am very thankful uh, to the organizers who have provided this opportunity to introduce uh, such an eminent scholar, Dr. Vishwanath D. Hegde. Uh, he is presently working as a scientist E at Western Ghat Regional Center, uh, Kojikode, Kerala. He did his PhD from Karnataka University, Tharwar. He also worked as a lecturer, as a vice principal and principal in various colleges uh, in Karnataka region. He has presently knowledge on entomology. He had also completed nine projects of JSI in various states of India. And he had also handled one external funded project from Uttar Pradesh Biodiversity Board, Lucknow. He has the working knowledge of various ecosystems which spread over all, all uh, states of India like West Bengal, Odisha and uh, rest of uh, regions of India. He published more than 100 research papers, various national international journals and also authored more than 30 chapters in various books. He also written three reference books. So, on this uh, brief introduction, I am uh, welcoming Dr. Vishwanath Hegde, sir, uh, by offering a virtual bouquet. I hope sir will accept our virtual bouquet. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, you can start your session. Uh, sir, going to uh, uh, today's topic for this session is taxonomy and colpic trust. Over to you. Hey, sir, over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, respected, uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Okay. Respected Abba Sahib Suresh Patil, Secretary, Mangartai Suresh Patil, President, Baya Sahib C. Patil, Vice President of Vidya Vikas Mandal Sakri, Inaugurator, Professor B.V. Pawar, Pro Vice Chancellor, Chief Guest, Professor D.L. Tarwane, Administrative Officer, Chairperson and Principal Dr. R. R. Ahire, all the respected organizing committee members and Dr. Patole sir, members of the National Advisory Committee, members of the Technical Committee, members of the Local Organizing Committee and all the student participants 
it gives me an immense pleasure to speak on the occasion of golden jubilee year of sitaram goind patil college sakri district dhule uh, first of all i want to congratulate all the members of the staff members of the college as well as the committee members of sitaram goind patil college for celebration of the golden jubilee year today i am delivering the lecture of taxonomy on coleoptera in the international webinar on biosystematics and animal biodiversity let me have the slides uh, can you see the slides hello sir yes we can, can see, see but it is but it is not in a full screen mode we can see please uh, make it the last one Sir, make it uh, in full view. Okay, is it okay? Yes, yes, yes. sir. Is it okay? Okay. Uh, today I am speaking on taxonomy of beetles. The study of beetles is nothing but the Coleoptera. So here I have shown the three photos. The first one is Tenebrionide, that is Dapium beetle. The second one is also the Tenebrionide. Uh, which is the dominant genus Gonocephalum, and the third one is Longhorn beetle or the family Cirambicidae. So, regarding Coleoptera, so this word has come from Greek. Coleus means sheath, uh, hard and protect the four wings in beetles. Sheath means four wings in beetles. They are hard and protect the hind wings. important characteristics are four wings are modified to form hard covering called elytra and hind wings are real organs of flying in this uh, figure you can see the mainly the three parts the head prothorax and the abdomen or the elytra region and all other parts also i have shown in the figure this is the largest order of insects versatile in the habitat having marvelous color and structure 3 lakh 50000 species described under 157 families in the world and nearly 17431 species in india belonging to more than 100 families maybe 150 to 120 families are reported from india so regarding the size of the coleoptera they may be 0.6 even smaller than that then up to 15 cm size sometimes maybe more than 15 cm size the front wings much thicker wearless and meeting in a mid dorsal straight line hind wings are membranous with few veins and mouth parts are biting and chewing type antennae mostly 9 to 11 segmented and legs three pairs of thoracic legs but rarely apodous and abdomen with 10 segments next is regarding the success of beetles so these are the very successful insects because of the exceptional success of beetles may be due to their elytra and hard cuticle beetles can be found in all available habitats and they utilize a wide variety of food sources this is the success of beetle some are predators for example ladybirds the family coccinidae and ground beetles the family carabidae and decomposers so mainly carry on beetles the family silphidae and darkling beetles enebrionidae then dung beetles scarabidae and various food wood decomposers then among herbivores chrysomelidae and meloidae are important then pests chrysomelidae spolitidae bupristidae curculinidae and ceramidae so types of antenna found in beetles first one is filiform it is thread like then capitate it is knob clavate it is clubbed and moniliform bead like serrate it is saw like lamellate sometimes leaf or plate like pectinate it is just like comb then biflavellate fan shaped and geniculate it is elbowed then regarding the habitat of the beetles Uh, Himalayas, Darjeeling and its surroundings, Assam only, northeastern states, Nirgilis and Western Ghats are the 
paradise of beetles uh, bushes and foliage under bark stones and logs of woods dead standing trees flower stems roots seeds cereals cereals means actually seeds and cereals these are all uh, sometimes these are uh, the pests in uh, uh, on the plants and then leaf litter dung carry on ponds streams and fungus etc sometimes they are in association with ants that is called myrmecophily and with the termites that is called termitophily and with fungus uh, these are fungi or uh, beetles so among coleoptera important families are blister beetles meroidae ground beetles carabidae including tire beetles because this uh, cicindelidae earlier it was a family now it is, it is coming under the ground beetles carabidae and it is a sub family now cicindelidae dung beetles scarabidae then darkwing beetles tenebridae ladybird beetles coccylidae leaf beetles chrysomelidae click beetles elytridae rhinoceros beetles purpuleoridae longhorn beetles cerambicidae and so on and so forth so collection of different beetles from their respective habitats where you can collect so from the ground you can collect cicindelinae just i told so these are the tiger beetles uh, coming under the family carabidae uh, from damp places you will get then tenebridae usually under the stone or in the desert places and stephylinidae in the bank of streams then from the water you will get dytisidae gyridae and hydrophilidae these are all aquatic beetles carrion and dung if you see then scarabidae histridae dermestidae and sylphidae you will get from carrion and dung from the plant you can get chrysomelidae coccylidae purpuleidae bupristidae meroidae brookidae and scarabidae then these are the wood borers cerambicidae bupristidae elytridae spolitidae postitidae anopidae pecilidae and lucanidae so these are the serious wood borers and sometimes they can destroy the whole tree bark from the bark you will get spolitidae and cucuidae sometimes tenebridae also uh, from the fungus you will get tenebridae erotilidae erotilidae is a uh, uh popularly called pleasing fungus beetle then endometride these are called handsome fungus beetle because they are very handsome in color then scapulidide scapulidide these are shining fungus beetle and from the flower you will get meloidide scarabidide cerambicidae chrysomelidae purpuleidae and bupristidae so these are the different families so some representative photos i have given uh, rhinoceros beetle that is carabidae then clover seed we will that is purpuleidae uh, then the great silver water beetle hydrophilidae then violet ground beetle this is carabidae then longhorn beetle that is coming under cerambicidae then the green tiger beetle that is cicindelinae of the family carabidae and then seven spotted ladybug from coccylidae and stag beetle from lucanidae click beetle that is elytridae and death watch beetle and glower so these are the some of the uh, uh, figures i have shown here wasp nest before the attack of the ripoporid beetle you can see and wasp nest after attack of the ripoporid beetle so that means even in wasp nest you will find some of the beetles so here i have shown with the figure so this is the pupa developing and then the pupa of ripoporid ripoporid feed and the adult of ripoporid beetle so you can see here so regarding the size varied in size and shape then usually from 0.25 to 15 cm and the smallest beetle that is under the family tilidae uh, these are called feather wing beetles inhabiting in soil and roots of grass are as minute as 0.25 cm the largest beetle is scarabidae is of 15 cm even more than 15 cm in size then some of the medically important beetles several beetle families 
have been reported as medically important for example meloide meloide also it, uh, meloide secretes some of the chemicals called cantharidin which is helpful in the treatment of some kidney diseases then stapelinide tenibrunide and dermestide families are responsible for most of the complaints related to human health however other families including odimeride coxinide posside cucuzide corilofide and scarabide can also afflict humans so the common symptoms from the effect of uh, in the humans symptoms observed are skin lesions as well as respiratory eye or skin allergies sometimes then arising from contact with beetle hemolymph and or toxic secretions and from the larval hairs so these are the major families staphylinidae uh, popularly called row beetles these are the scavengers and herbivores elytra are characteristically shorter than the abdomen i will show you the photo of this uh, staphylinidae so curculinidae these are the weevil soft snout beetles so they are having the chewing mouth parts are the, at the tip of the proboscis so carabidae these are ground beetles these are the predators many beneficial species including the fiery hunter calosoma calidum are the examples of carabidae then chrysomelidae regarding chrysomelidae these are the leaf beetles Her, these are herbivores includes many pests of agricultural crops most species have distinctive shapes or color patterns example colorado potato beetle then the other major families are scarabidae scarab beetles so these are herbivores robust beetles with the heavy spines on femur and tibia distinctive lamellate antennae and usually live in the soil as larvae and feed on plant roots these include many pest species including the japanese beetle popilla japonica next is tenebridae dark beetles which uh, i am working on oh, this one family tenebridae these are herbivores found in flowers rotting wood under stones and occasionally as pests of stored grain most abundant in arid climates cerambicidae these are the long horn beetles or otherwise called as longicorn beetles these are herbivores all larvae are food wood borers and adults have distinctively long antenna that's why the name long horn beetles a few species are pests of wood and wood products and the other major families are elytridae click beetles so when adults are turned on their back they can snap the head and abdomen against the substrate to right themselves producing the sound click that's why these are called click beetles bupristidae these are the metallic wood borers they are having the marvelous color because of that sometimes even uh, in the northeast at all so some ladies will use it as the earrings these are herbivores larvae are non known as flat headed wood borers some species are forestry pests coxinidae these are also beautiful beetles lady beetles most adults and larvae are predators of aphids and scale insects but a few species are pests of agricultural crops so other noteworthy families are cicidinidae tiger beetle uh, these are the predators then dicidae these are the large aquatic predators true water beetles then dirinidae wriggling beetles or aquatic predators then hydrophilidae water scavenger beetles scavengers and predators sylphidae carry on beetles these are the scavengers then lampridae so you might have seen during the rainy season uh, near the uh, plants and all you will see the light so this light is produced by the oxidation of luciferin mediated enzymatic reduction of luciferinase so these are due to the lampridae fireflies then dermestidae these are the carpet beetles these are scavengers and herbivores and nitidulidae the sap beetles scavengers and herbivores on which actually one of my student has done her phd from kolkata then meloidae these are blister beetles uh, larval parasites and adults are herbivores then spolitidae are bark beetles they are also herbivores then regarding the fact file 
Coleoptera is the largest order in the animal kingdom. It includes 40% of all insects and nearly 30% of all animal species. The smallest beetle is fringed ant beetle, that is Nanocella fungi, from the family Tilidae. It may be 0.25 mm in length, and the largest beetle is Goliathus gigantius from the family Scarabidae, which may be having more than 15 cm size. Two families of Coleoptera are bioluminescent, means able to produce light. Uh, one is uh, fireflies, that is family Lampyridae, and the other one is glowworms, family uh, Pegoidae, have light producing organs in the abdomen. In some species, the females are wingless and larviform. So, over 1000 beetle species are known to live as predators and parasites or commensals in the nests of ants. They gain entrance to the nest by mimicking the odor and behavior of the ants. This is the adaptation of these beetles in order to enter the nests of ants. So, bombardier beetles coming under the family Carabidae, so Brachina species have the ability to discharge a defensive spray of hot quinones. These are the chemicals and that will burn the skin of the animal or the person who is catching the bombardier beetle. Uh, males of many stag beetles, uh, family Lucanidae and scarab beetles, family Scarabidae, have enlarged mandibles or protruding horse, which are used in courtship and in ritualizing fights with other males. The Spanish fly, Lita vesicatoria, family Meroidae, is the source of cantharidin. I have already told this is the chemical produced by the beetle Meroidae or the uh, melody is otherwise called as bristle beetles because this cantharidin or the chemical will burn the skin of the person who is catching the uh, beetle. So, this uh, chemical cantharidin is now used as a mating stimulant in breeding cattle and in the treatment of certain urogenital diseases. So, then regarding the collection methods, so equipments. So you can see these are required, collecting net, dip net, beating tray, aspirator, camel hair brushes, forceps killing bottles, forceps, then uh, glass wires, uh, field storage box, labeling papers, small insect envelope, pencil, collecting bag and field notebook. So when you are going to collect the beetles from the field, you have to have all these instruments or equipments. Then the first one is collecting net that is aerial net. This is for butterflies and fly insects. So uh, the handle of this net will be very light. Then the second one is sweeping net. It should have stronger and durable hand. Then this is the aspirator. With the help of the aspirator also, we can collect some of the small beetles. And uh, it is very easy to use. One has to suck the air by rubber tubing, which would draw the insect into the main tube through the glass tube. So the lid of the main tube may be removed and the entire content may be put inside the killing bottle. So these are the aquatic nets for gathering aquatic insects, usually made of metal ring with perforated cloth net with a canvas band affixed to a metal ring. Then uh, the below one is the beating tray. This is uh, used for the collection of the beetles which are uh, sleeping or lying on the small bushes. So we can keep the tray be, uh, below the bushes and then we have to beat the bushes. Then we will get some of the beetles. Then aspirator. So this is the aspirator I have already told. Then killing water. Killing water contains ethyl acetate and relaxing box. It is a dampened airtight box with a drop of ethyl acetate to prevent fungal infections. Then uh, label papers are also needed, should contain so locality from where we have collected, the date of collection and the name of the collector, habitat. Habitat means so if you have collected from the light, then you have to write at light. Then if you are collecting from 
the bark of the tree then you have to write from the bark of the tree like that habitat also it should be mentioned in the label papers then only it is very easy to identify the specimens then anthrops for temporary storage of delicate specimens so these are the traps light trap for light attracting insects then funnel trap trap with a funnel at the bottom and then sheet trap with a big white sheet and metal trap for some flies and beetles so sugar traps for various orders of insects these are the uh, diagrams then this is the light trap so artificial light like the petromax gas light if placed adjacent to the white marble cloth in field can attract the number of beetles not only beetles so it will attract so many insects then collection methods so collection methods so hand picking so we can collect the some of the beetles most of the beetles can be collected by hand bare hand only because they will not harm anything sometimes they will emit some chemicals that may burn the skin that is all temporary then preservation ethanol or ethyl alcohol 70 to 80% will be used for uh, preservation it is the best killing and preserving agent nowadays we are using the 70% or 80% ethanol because if we want to do some dna uh, testing then formalin should not be used because tissue becomes excessively hardened and sometimes even the color will also be changed and we are using the cotton balls so that contains carbolic camphor and alcohol solution soaked in cotton balls for preservation inside the insect box and naphthalene powder will also be used on the sides of insect storage drawer boxes in order to prevent the fungal infection then these are the dry preservation procedures for dry preservation first we should kill the beetle in a killing jar containing ethyl acetate then the cyanide vapors can also be used then we need to relax the specimens and uh, uh, we have to dry the specimens otherwise the ants will attack the specimens or it may be attacked by the fungus so we have to uh, leave it for about 12 hours or until it is softened enough to handle so if they are still too hard we need to return to the box immediately and wait for another 6 hours then we should not leave the beetle in the box for more than 36 hours or else fungus will start developing so museum pests can also cause the great amount of damage to our collection so in order to prevent the museum pests you have to take care of uh, these specimens with the help of naphthalene and uh, the camphor and this uh, cotton soaked uh, material then however chemicals must be used to kill the insects and keep them out if we want to keep our collection in good conditions for years we can use a simple moth ball in your storage box and add a new one when the ball had evaporated so that you have to take care the moth uh, this the cotton ball should not be evaporated if the chemical is evaporated again the fungus infection will be there for the specimens next we need to mount the beetle either on cards or pin it on a board and keep it in a dry chamber for a few days in order to dry then next the pinned beetles can be shifted to permanent wooden cabinets supplied with a cotton ball dipped in a solution made of camphor and carbolic acid i have already told regarding this surrounding the boundaries to protect the specimens from the infection so these are the wet preservation procedure wet preservation can be done mainly by 70% ethyl alcohol or ethanol the specimen can be collected on borosil glass vials wet preservation is best suited for small and soft bodied beetles and sometimes for the dna study we have to preserve the specimens in 70% ethyl alcohol so these are the entomological pins in order to pin the uh, beetles so it is a stainless steel pin with 
usually 3.8 cm long and even you can use the small pins also for smaller animals and most useful pins are number 1531 so next is about the writing labels so labels are also very important without them the collection will not be worth much in its scientific value because you have to write all the uh, details of the collector then location from where the specimen is collected then date of collection then altitude of the place of collection and gps coordinates should also be there in the labels then these are the name labels so who has determined the specimen are usually bordered in black and content and the scientific name of the specimen will be there then the person that identified the insect so that will be written as determined by and the year of identification and if space would allow habitat and sex of the insect should also be labeled so for example actia luna this is the female uh, you can use the female symbol for this if it is female and it is determined by gn saha why i have taken gn saha he was a good uh, uh, collectologist and uh, he was the specialist on the family meroidae uh, and the labels are made out of non acid special label paper and you have to write it in rotary pen and this is the method of pinning so next is regarding the identification of different families the first one is the dark winged beetles or tenebridae these are identified by the combination of the following pictures eleven segmented antenna which may be filiform so you can see in the figure this is the bonacephalum genus uh, or it may be boniliform or weakly club then first abdominal sternite entire and not divided by the hind coxae and tarsi have the tarsal formula 554 means uh, the tarsa the fore leg and the middle leg may be having the five tarsal tarsa and the last leg or the hind leg will be having only four types of tarsa so that's why the tarsal formula is 554 and eyes notched by a frontal ridge this is the representative figure of the tenebridae so next is carabidae these are the ground beetles so these are terrestrial diurnal or nocturnal insects found in damp places usually black or often having a bronze tinge or violet iridescence so sometimes it may be colorful like uh, the carabidae example anthia succitata that is the biggest uh, ground beetle so that is having the black and white color antenna long generally filiform and tarsal formula is 554 but in tenebridae the tarsal formula was 554 body surface is generally shiny and head narrow four wings huge red hind wings atrophied and cannot fly these are the chrysomeridae or leaf beetles these are economically important agricultural pests or defoliators live openly on plants feed on roots stems and leaves shape may be various elongated cylindrical to flat and oval color varied and bright third tarsal segment bilobed antenna short to medium and without club so this is curculinidae weevils or snout beetles you can find this curculinidae or weevils even in rice or in uh, the wheat flour or inside the banana plant you will get this type of beetles weevils or snout beetles and they will destroy the whole banana plant large and important group of inhabiting plants nuts and tubers and head to prolonged with the beak or snout used for boring you can see in the figure so uh, beak or snout is used for boring then why not to medium sized elongate sclerotized beetles exhibiting different colors so these are the scarabidae or dung beetle so you might have seen these beetles large oval or converse highly sclerotized beetles antenna level at and whole tibia dilated with outer edge tooth hind tibia slender uh, found in different habitats these are scavengers in habitat 
these are the long horn beetles or longicorn beetles in terms of family ceramidae a large size bright and attractive color so they are very much abundant in uh, northeastern states some are serious pets of forest trees and timber larvae bore into wood then shape elongated cylindrical size may be 3 to 150 mm in length always with the long antennae you can see the antennae uh, the big antennae and usually brownish or sometimes brightly color so this is kilatride as i have told already these are called click beetle family named based on the habit of springing into air with a clicking sound that's why the name click beetle adult body elongate flat black gray or metallic color and adults occur on flowers under bark and vegetation these are the coccinellidae ladybird beetle so these are the beautiful beetles common and economically important as they feed on unwanted aphids and coccids shape may be round and convex 1 to 10 mm in size and color usually red or black with various markings these are the mupristidae jewel beetles so these are uh, called jewel beetles as i already told so this may be used as the earring and in northeast some people will use it as earring that's why these beetles are called jewel beetle and some are bright metallic in color easily recognized by their hard body head strongly deflecting and adults are strong flyers and make buzzing noise when they fly uh, these sometimes they will come to light during night these these are used as jewelry and embroidery of dresses hydrophilidae these are the uh, water scavenger beetles so these are aquatic species recognized by their convex oval shape maxillary palpi usually longer than short club antenna then color usually black brown or with some markings found near edges of ponds streams you might have seen these near the ponds and antenna small clubbed and aids in respiration so these are staphylinidae these are the row beetles easily recognized by truncated elytra you may not found in any beetles like this so this is the truncated elytra exposing the large part of the abdomen shape narrow elongated color black brown yellowish blue or reddish etc these are mostly carnivorous and some are vegetable eaters sometimes you may confuse with the order dermoptera lucanidae or stag beetle these are attractive by their looking appearance males have long exposed mandibles uh, you can see the mandibles here depressed and broadly elongated in shape they are usually found in decaying logs and stumps attracted to light and this uh, photo was taken from arunachal pradesh so these are the meloidae bristle beetles photo taken by uttar pradesh phytophagous insects body soft narrow elongate these are otherwise called as bristle beetles because they will produce the chemical cantharidin and that will burn the skin then head prominent round or oval and larger than pronotum these are very soft means its elytra is very soft flexible and brilliantly colored so beetles contain an oil cantharidin this cause the blisters so conclusion of my topic from all this information we may conclude that it is very essential to learn about all the modern techniques and equipments used nowadays along with some old tips for collection and preservation of beetles moreover we need to learn the new taxonomic methodology for identification of the same patience is utmost requirement in this field and we need to develop an interest for the insects in order to work in this field Oh, my lecture has given some information about the collection preservation and identification of beetles and i will be very happy if this could inspire our future entomologist in any positive way thank you very much thank you sir thank you very much uh, in you. your lecture
you have just explored the beautiful world of beetles and you also give us a nice information on noteworthy families fact file of animal kingdom we have just enjoyed your lecture as the program on animal planet uh, you have just uh, create a world of animal planet in front of all the participants thank you for your words of wisdom on behalf of organizing committee i would like to uh, i would like to thank you uh, for this uh, be beautiful session thank you very much sir Uh, now let us move to the uh, next session and the second session is by honorable dr aparna kalawati madam before that i would like to request my colleague dr zanjay patil sir to introduce dr aparna kalawati ma'am or dr patil sir thank you sir It gives me immense pleasure to introduce eminent personality, Dr. Aparna Kalawati, ma'am. Ma'am has pursued B.Sc. and M.Sc. in Agriculture, Ethnology, degree from Dr. Punjab Rao Deshmukh Krishi Vidyapeeth, Akola. Ma'am is presently serving as Scientist D at Zoological Survey of India, Western Regional Center, Akuri, Pune. Ma'am has been a chairperson and a jury for number of national and international conferences. She is a life member of the Kilopterist Kilopterist Society as well as Indian Academy of Food Sciences. Ma'am is also a member of Journal of Agriculture Research and Technology. <laughs> she is also a member of biopesticides as well as ma'am is a member of governing council for the indian academy of food sciences bangalore she is also a senior member of asia pacific chemical biological and environmental engineering society ma'am you are a recipient of mpkv university merit scholarship during phd program in 2014 ma'am has filed a patent on preservatives and a method of protecting wood and wood based panel products ma'am has published more than 54 research papers in reputed journals as well as eight technical articles and 11 books to her credit today ma'am is with us and she will be delivering a talk on pots and their role in our ecosystem welcome ma'am and over to you ma'am Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. I think. Uh, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma And can you see Just, the uh, make slides? Yes. Yeah. Yes, slide is, but uh, make it proportionally uh, larger yes. in original form. Okay. Okay. Is it okay now? Yeah, ma'am. It's okay. You are audible now. Uh, ma'am, please uh, make your uh, camera adjust your camera so that we can have the full view of. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I welcome you all. I welcome you all to the amazing world of moths. Now, what is moth? Moths are the cousins of butterflies. actually many people except the biological researchers many does not know what is moth moths are evolved before much before the butterflies 
many of the students if i ask whenever i take a class when they come to me if i ask what is the difference between moth and butterflies do you know what is moth so many students says no we do not know moth what are the basic difference between moth and butterfly how you differentiate many of them says no we do not know so this is the plight that is why today i have taken this topic so that you know students should be known that what is moth now these are the basic difference between moth and butterflies the general gen, actually these are not uh, like you know proper but generally we say moths are nocturnal that means we can see moths in night and butterflies are diurnal that means we can see butterflies in the day and the resting position means when a moth sits or a butterfly sits the moths will make its uh, the wings on the roof of the body over the body and when a butterfly sits it makes its wings erect upward in the position and then the next difference is between the antennae types of the antennae so moths are having pectinate or bipectinate type of antennae whereas butterflies have clavate now what is pectinate or bipectinate pectinate means like if you are, you everybody knows the comb so it has brush in one side so that is pectinate now bipectinate brush in two sides uh, in a comb so that is bipectinate clavet is just a, a string like of antennae now moths are having scales on all over the body whereas butterfly having wings uh, scales only on the wings so these are the usual general difference between moths and butterflies but there are exceptionals there are some moths which we could see in the day also that is called as diurnal moths and there are many uh, moths which have clavate type of antennae but generally this is a difference between moth and butterfly now why moths why many many people when i many people says that there are many other fascinating groups present there then why you study moths also studying moths is not easy as one has to be remain in the field in night so for the answer is moths actually amazes me so that is why i have chosen moth for my research and for my study now moths plays many important characters like most of the adult moths feed on nectar and they are having agricultural importance immense agricultural importance but and also there are the larvae of moths are destructive means they causes damage to the crops to the uh, crops like for example bollworm complex bollworm everybody knows the bondali so the bollworm complex is a major havoc in cotton crops also brinjal shoot and fruit borer so this is also another destructive and havoc paste then army worm so this is also another very very destructive paste then everybody knows about silk moth so silk moths are like generally ladies mostly loves because they like silk sarees so silk moths again come from moths silk again comes from moth then stored grain paste there are many insects which are pest on stored grains for example rice moth which we see when we keep a container of rice without any preservative and when we when we does not open it for many days and once if we open it we will see many of the small small moths coming out of that the container so those are rice moths then moths also plays important role in pollination of night blooming crop this is the most important role then in they are also indicator of environmental change they are the indicator taxa now diversity of moths in india there are uh, there are reports which says around 12000 species of moths are recorded from india and recently 777 species of moths have been recorded from india now how to study uh, moths as i have already told earlier that to study moths one has to be in the field in nights so we have to put a light trap that is also called as sheet method here you can see in one of the picture this white sheet is there and in front of that one bulb is hung 
so we have to put we have to tie a sheet like this in between two poles in forest and then we have to put a uv bulb for a light source so that the moths get attracted to this light source and they come and sit on the light sheet so the commonly found moths we just take picture and we record and the moths which we see which is interesting which may be something new or which needs to be investigate in the, the laboratory those moths we collect and get to the laboratory so when we for this light trap one should have a generator because it requires electricity but in case when we do not have generator so then we can use a alternative that is a petromax or gas lamp which you see in the next picture here we have put a gas lamp and uh, this is a forest area in amboli then now we have to use after light we have to use baits to attract the moth so we use different type of baits like sugar bait wine rope bait fruit bait then synthetic pheromones also we use to attract the moths to catch <clears throat> now morphology i will not go much into the morphology just some of the things i will cover moths generally divide into three parts head thorax and abdomen and the antennae of the moth is located on the head they also used to smell and touch the head portion is completely occupied by a pair of rounded compound eyes then adult moth has specialized type of mouth parts which is called as proboscis and many adult moths they do not actually feed but there are exceptions there are some moth which they feed in adult stage also like for example fruit sucking moth this fruit sucking moth is a creature which causes havoc in orchards like citrus pomegranate etc and this moth still did whatever research we do are very very difficult to control it is a havoc for agricultural like our farmer friends so when the moth when the uh, in the larval stage they have different type of feeding mechanism and in adult stage they have different type of feeding mechanism this proboscis is a narrow tube here you can see this is a proboscis and it is a narrow tube which are joined together this proboscis is kept coiled and hidden completely or partly between this labial palpi now what is now the life cycle of moths all the moths please read here moths all the moths go through a three, uh, life cycle which is called as a complete metamorphosis like egg then larva then pupa and then adult so this meta, this life cycle is called as a complete metamorphosis and the stages and the advantage of this complete metamorphosis it is that it allows the larva and the pupa larva and the adult to live in a different environmental conditions we always see when we see a larva we will see the larva eating on the plant and when we see this adults we see them flying or sitting on somewhere on the plant or on the like you know sometimes we see even in our home when we put lights so they come and they sit in our walls so these are the scales these are the microscopic like you know structure of the scales which are present on the wings so these are the wing coupling apparatus which is present in the moth so there are two type of wing coupling apparatus in moths one is frenet and the other one is jugate so this you can see here one like you know sharp pointed uh, thread like is there so this is frenulum and here some like you know bunch of uh, here hairs are there scales that is called as retinaculum this is required this uh, this structure helps the moth in flight this is the jugate type of wing coupling so now we will see some common moths this moth is a cycad moth it belongs to the family cycidae this is a moth which is belongs to the family totricidae and it is also called as a leaf roller moth means it just the larvae just lives inside the leaf and it roll the leaf and inside it it remains so this is a totricid moth these are again the another examples of totricid moths the bell moth this is also called as bell moth these are pyralid moth 
which is called as snout moth here you can say why it is called as snout moth because here you can say there is a snout like structure so because of this it is called as a snout moth very beautiful moths now these are the larvae of parallel moth one can see how much of destruction they causes in the field from this picture now the next is the geometrid moth these moths are called as lupa moths emerald moths or carpet moths these moths are very very beautiful actually many people says oh studying moths is very like you know because moths are very dull so studying moths is very bore moths are very dull colored drab colored but it's not like that the world of moths is very beautiful when we start study we get automatically attracted to the moths so the geometrid moths are called as lupa moths emeralds and carpets the larvae of this moths have only one pair of pro leg and anal claspers generally these moths have slender bodied with very broad wings you can see here very broad wings and their abdomen their body is very slender they are small to large moth like 10 to 100 mm the wing span means total this wing span is 10 to 100 mm now the another example is a lesiocampid moth these are also called as lepid lepid moth and the family is lesiocampidae this moth we can recognize this are this will be very small snout and very bulky so these are lepid moth then the next moth is saturnidae moth everybody knows this emperor moth atlas moth moon moth or beaut all beauties belongs to this order saturnidae so this saturnid moths this is a atlas moth you can see here it is the biggest moth atlas moth then this is a leopa species a beautiful yellow colored moth brightly colored this family this uh, uh, this family moth do not have wing coupling me me mechanism they do not have hostile hostilum also maxillary palps are present but is vestigial they do not feed this this moths they do not feed they are large to very large moth for example 80 to 300 mm of wing span and in this it is a very diverse family 1300 species are recorded globally so these are again some of the photographs of saturnid moths and see here these are down in the in this down these are the larvae of the saturnid moths on this the hairs are present which are dangerous now the next important family is arctidi family the uh, arctidi family comprises of tiger moths and very beautiful moths the uh, the hairs present on the larvae of this is very very harmful and it causes uh, like for example uh, this asota one genus is there so in that the larvae of that moth causes lepidopterism lepidopterism means it is a fever when a person comes into the contact of the hairs of that uh, larvae so then it causes the person gets fever so it is hazardous then this uh, some of the uh, moths which are called as webworm they make like this type of webs on the plant tree these are the uh, sphinx moths spingidae so these moths are called as sphinx moths and hawk moths these are again beautiful moths and these moths are having important uh, role they play important role in pollination of the night blooming crops these are the larvae of sphinx moth very beautiful then another important family is noctidae this family is very important as it plays as the uh, moths of this family causes uh, havoc and uh, causes losses economic losses in many crops like cotton bolvan bolvan complex belongs to this family that is um, helicoverpa armigera and uh, that causes havoc these are the uh, moths of this family is also called as underwing moth lupa moth cutworm moth these are the larvae there are the some larvae of the uh, noctid moths then the uh, next is tinidi moth these moths are also called as cloth moth as they live in sometimes they live in cloth they run rather than fly some of the families are specialized as fungivorous they eat fungus 
these are the small moth very small 10 to 20 mm wingspan mostly dull brown in color they have rough scales on the head of adult and hostellum often degenerate there are 3000 species belongs to this uh, family globally and they are the close relatives of bagworms that is cycad moths then the next comes is grassy laridi these are called, these are the moths blotch and blister mites which causes mites and uh, adults with very long antennae they have very long antennae which you can see here very long antennae smooth scales on the head their sizes their wingspan is 7 to 20 mm they are often very uh, colorful reds yellows are dominant adult of this you can see in this picture rest with front mid legs pushing front of body at 30 degrees from horizontal with tip of abdomen still touching substrate wings tightly wrapped so the next come is jellychidi these are borers or dwellers you can see here in the picture the third segment of labial palp usually long narrow and upturned or recurved these are mostly dull colored and uh, there are very uh, there are few species which are bright small to fairly small moths that is 10 to 20 mm wingspan of this moth is the next is crampidi this moths are leaf rollers again there are 16 subfamilies in this moth it is a very diverse then small to quite large moths are there in this 10 to 50 mm of wingspan they are often colorful rest almost flat quite rest at the head here here you can see they rest almost flat wings widespread in most subfamilies they always keep their antennae along the top of the abdomen see here how they have kept the antennae so when you see a moth whose antennae are like this so you can say these are the moths belong to, belongs to the family crambidi and also the same condition is there in pyrelidi the larvae of essentropini moths are aquatic these are the beautiful crambid moths the picture of some of the crambid moths then thyrididi these are the tropical moths they sit in the up posture they have intricate pattern often with high line patches they also roll the leaf and live in that rolled leaf then these are the zygenidi moths these are also called as burnet moths this type of larvae is there they are small to large moths and often very bright brightly colored very beautiful moths but very dangerous they have poison they they are capable of making hydrogen uh, cyanide poisonous this many species are diurnal this is uh, as i have told you earlier many of the species are diurnal so these are the beautiful zygenid moths now next is cecidi this is called as clear wing moths and it mimics like wasp and bees you can see from this photograph it usually look like a wasp almost exclusively this is almost exclusively diurnal and sometimes seen at light when we put in the night so next is the arabidi tussock moth or tiger moth so this is hind their hind wings with quadrifid cubital vent pattern their hostilium is also vestigial some species are forest defoliators these are the pictures of the beautiful arabid moths this is the owl moth this moth is called as owl moth as it has owl type of like you know eyes so there are many important role which moth plays number one is herbivorous the caterpillar feeds on the plant parts including tree shrub glass lichen and algae they are also pollinators of the night blooming uh, crops food for many they are the moth caterpillar is a source of food for many birds bats including insect spider frog toads and lizards they are very economic some of the moths are very economic as they are based on many commercial and cash crops they are an important element of our food web as many other organisms are dependent on them for food they are of immense value in our food web so this was all about the moths which i can which i had just shared you so i hope everybody will like you know like to like moths as they like butterflies and they study and many students will take moths as a subject for their study in msc and phd so thank you thank you ma'am
you very much for your session on moths in your session you have covered diversity of india regarding the moths you also explained the morphology and life cycle of moths you have just created the fantastic world of moths and also explained the role played by the moths in this vast world thank you very much for your nice session on this uh, very interesting topic for all of us thank you very much on the behalf of organizing committee i would like to thank you for this wonderful session now for the third session the third session will be conducted by honorable dr barve sir and before that i would like to request my colleague dr pradeep rator sir to introduce honorable dr barve sir over to you dr rator sir thank you international webinar on biosystematics and animal I am audible, sir. Thank you very much, sir. In today's international webinar on biosystematics and animal diversity, our third speaker is Dr. Vijay Vasan Barve. About Dr. Barve, I am going to discuss in short. Dr. Vijay Barve has been a nature enthusiast from the childhood. and interested in birds as well as in insects he has a masters degree in computer science and completed phd degree in geography from the university of kansas <clears throat> he continued his interest in biodiversity and now works as a researcher in biodiversity informatics and citizen science in university of florida and purdue university then after that in 2001 he initiated to work in diversity into the india and then he <clears throat> works as a citizen you know, he works in the citizen science group contributing to biodiversity documentation in india and beyond then also he participated in various activities as well as coordinates in various activities like national moth week then big butterfly month as well as spider week these are the different topics he works in india also about the dr vijay barve he pursued bsc degree in 1992 and master degree in 1994 in computer science from the pune university but phd in 2015 in geographical information sciences from university of kansas usa then we may discuss about the computer science as well as geographical study about the speaker means he has the different interest in the biodiversity of the india he got young researchers award for 2014 by global biodiversity information facility in gbif at present he is working as post doctoral research fellow with florida museum of natural history university of florida <coughs> jensville he also work as a visiting scientist in department of civil and environmental engineering technion hepa israel he is member of iucn ssc butterfly specialist group gbif biodiversity open data ambassador member of many societies including big butterfly moth and spider he is curator and reviewer of many scientific journals <coughs> he has published more than 50 research paper in peer reviewed journal with 2000 plus citations and today in the international webinar dr vijay barve is going to deliver his valuable lecture on animal biodiversity 
so i am requesting to dr vijay barve please deliver your lecture over to you sir dr vijay barve sir thank you so much thank you for the nice introduction uh, i just want to make sure that i am audible and my screen is visible yes, completely sir, you are audible okay. as well as your screen is also visible okay. please carry on sir yes thank you so much so uh, following a talk after uh, vishwanath ji and aparna ji who are uh, really eminent scientists is a big job but uh, uh, in some sense i am safe because i am not really a biologist i am going to talk about slightly uh, uh, different topic here uh, i am going to touch a little bit about animal biodiversity but my focus is going to be uh, documenting the diversity and how we can help uh, scientists learn more and more about the biodiversity around us so <clears throat> that is my topic i would like to start with a quote i uh, really like from eo wilson who is uh, one of the very famous uh, biogeography and uh, biodiversity scientists so he says that every every creature in the in the nature every every species that we come across is really a, a masterpiece and when we look uh, closer at uh, most of these um, species uh, we really uh, get to learn that so and and the the final part is who are we to destroy or even diminish them so he also in the same sentence says that it's our responsibility to take care of it so i will start with that quotation a uh, little little bit about what is biodiversity and what does it mean to us so very simple definition it's variety of life on earth uh, there are a lot of species yet to be discovered we have heard from both aparna ji and vishwanath ji that <coughs> all the biodiversity is still not well documented so there are a lot of things yet for us to discover and learn Yeah. but at the same time there are a lot of species which are kind of um, on the verge of uh, extinction uh, due to human activities may it be um, uh, using indiscriminate use of uh, chemical um, bio controllers or it could be habitat loss or it could be expanding cities or you know there are so many factors contributing to that uh, there are estimated to be 8 point i mean there are different estimates between 3 4 million to 8 10 millions of uh, species available and but obviously we know that there are about 1.2 million uh, species um, described so far so that is the kind of uh, biodiversity that we are looking at and why it is important is for everything the, the air that we breathe uh, it is cleaned by all the plants so plant diversity is very important the water we drink the food we eat we have just um, you were just listening to the talks where uh, the speakers were talking about importance of moths in pollination and things like that so um, uh, creating food Uh, supplying uh, cleaner water all these services are done by biodiversity in some form or other but extinction of many species also is being driven by us because we do not realize that we have what harm we are making and we really need to uh, make sure that we protect them uh, there are a lot of um, you know, many times people say that this this earth or the biodiversity is not something something that we have inherited from our parents but it is something that um, we owe to our children so we have to take care of that so having said that i will talk a little bit about uh, biodiversity uh, especially animal biodiversity in india so india is a country where we have uh, so many different kinds of biomes starting from um evergreen forest and cloud forest and whatever green forest all the way up to desert so 
we have so much of the variety and if you if you look at this table on your screen you can see that most of the most of the groups we have about 8 to 12 percent of the world's biodiversity in just our our own country and uh, these animals are so 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 much diverse that um, uh, it's, it's very uh, very nice hobby also to like kind of watch and learn about it not only just scientific studies so i am approaching uh, biodiversity in more of a hobby angle because as you know i am not a biologist i have, i have not studied biology after my 12th grade so uh, i'm i'm a computer science turned into geographer but now i i definitely work in biodiversity information science so this is the vertebrate diversity and we also just learn how much uh, invertebrate diversity these are just a few uh, few groups of uh, animals um, uh, i have uh, listed here but just to give you an idea that how much biodiversity we are uh, talking about and how different they are so we always keep talking about the biodiversity crisis there are a lot of problems we need to protect so just to get us get some idea like one of the most well known animals around india is tiger and it was reduced to less than 3% of its original population so whatever tiger population was there few hundred years back we only have now 3% fortunately there are a lot of countries and a lot of work being done for tiger project uh, protection there are a lot of funds and now the population is kind of improving but imagine what must be happening to those small insects that we have not even described or we don't even know their names or those who know we, we know the names but we do not really study them much so how bad that uh, crisis could be and what are the consequences we are going to face if we continue to do it the same way so that is the that is one of the messages i wanted to give so what is biodiversity documentation and why we need to do it so it's basically the the process of recording this biodiversity presence what is seen where so like everything is not seen everywhere so we need to make uh, recordings and reports of every region every um, village taluk district state country what are animal <laughs> diversity is available <laughs> am i not audible you are audible sir okay i heard something i thought someone is okay so let me continue so um, how how do we document it so there are so many different ways there are uh, collections biological collections and say collections are there so we can do that we can just keep records we take we can take photograph or make sound recordings wherever there are some vocal birds or some insects we can make sound recordings and and collect this information until recently uh if you look at how the biodiversity documentation was made it was mostly done by scientists but now of late there are more and more uh, citizen scientists what we call they are playing a important role people who are not really biologists like me but love nature and want to document these are the people who are also playing a pretty important role in this documentation so what are the different data sources that we can think of when it comes to biodiversity data obviously we all watch a lot of tv channels like national geographic and animal planet so a lot of videos is a very important documentation images as i was saying sound uh, there could be field traps where you uh, you have you take photographs or things like that Uh, some biodiversity can also be documented through remote sensing remote sensing data is useful for especially the plant diversity kind of things and then there are already a lot of documentation available in the forms of 
research publications, the collections which are housed in different museums. Then there is biologically sequencing data where a lot of this data is being uh, analyzed at molecular level. So we have that kind of information. And then we also have this whole new set of citizen scientists who are documenting. These are the kind of data sources that we are looking at. So just to kind of go over <coughs> how scientists or how people document. So one of the oldest method is actually keep a paper notebook and draw and draw different diagrams there, write description and collect information. Then slowly when um, there are more devices available, sound recording, video recording, taking photographs, and then uh, uh, so many different uh, kind of uh, uh, methods evolve. So just to go over a few which are not really well known, one of the methods is these camera traps, where there are these um, cameras um, kind of hidden from uh, animal side into the forest and they automatically take pictures and they sometimes take really, really interesting pictures. So this actually is a camera trap uh, picture in Africa of the cheetah. And this is another um, camera trap picture of a zebra. So this is how you can do. And then the pictures also record the date and time and where it was taken. So these kind of um, uh, camera traps can also collect a lot of information. As I was already talking, there are a lot of very uh, important and useful data available through centuries of research published in journals. So we can go back and refer those journals and we can see for the area and for the taxa that we are looking for. What are the kind of, um, uh, what is the literature available and what we can uh, what information we can get from that. So that is another important source. Collections, um, there are a lot of scientists over the last two, three hundred years. Uh, collections have been uh, prepared, curated and maintained where you know, the specimens are reserved for long term. It also has information about when it was collected, where it was connected, who collected it, things like that. So there is a enormous wealth of information in, in those collections. And some of those collections are also being used to do the molecular work or sequencing. So that is a very, very important data source. And then citizen science, it's, it's, a, it's a growing moment with especially we have uh, uh, availability of internet everywhere. We have cell phones which can take picture or record videos and um, so there are a lot of school children, college going people, hobby bird watchers, hobby butterfly watchers. Everyone is actually um, exploring the nature, learning. So these are the avenues where there are limited number of scientists. So scientists cannot be there uh, everywhere at all the time. So basically uh, citizen scientists are kind of helping filling those gaps of this documentation, which is extremely important for, for all of us to kind of have to understand our biodiversity better. So why it is important if you look at how complete is the data, uh, this is a map. So when you see uh, yellow or red color, the data is fairly complete. If you see shades of blue, the data is not complete. So we don't have uh, good biodiversity documentation for most of the world we can see. Even if we go at, at lower resolutions and really well-known groups like birds and mammals, which are best studied, there are huge, huge gaps in this information. Don't even, we, we can't even imagine how many gaps are going to be there when it goes to groups like beetles and moths they're not that well studied all of you know so it's very important that more and more people get into these kind of studies and do it so what is the 
easiest and most important data that uh, citizens or any one of us can collect what we refer to as primary biodiversity record so it's basically just a very simple combination of what we have seen where you have seen when you saw it and who recorded it so i see a nice butterfly i can take a picture even if i don't know the name of that butterfly i can i definitely know when i have seen it and where i have seen it i can post it in certain uh, poor data portals or websites and i can get more information about it so that's how this information is collected so to collect this information in india there are two or three different uh, web portals one of these is i naturalist where uh, there is a lot of information being posted by Uh, scientists and amateurs together so here is kind of a screenshot of what kind of data is available so there are uh, close to um a million records available now um on i naturalist mm, there are 22000 species covered in it we know the number of species we we have in india so if we compare with that the the number is very small but fortunately th these are growing and uh, number of observers if you take there are about 19000 people who have posted photographs on this so this number is growing and as more and more people join such initiatives we will get to see uh, more and more uh, data in terms of number of species uh, so if you if you look on my screen this this person aniruddha who has documented almost 2500 species is just a is just a master student and last 3 4 years he has been documenting butterflies and moths like whatever he comes across he takes good photographs and post here and he is learning about it so he has posted close to 15000 records pertaining to about 2400 2500 species so this is what just a student can do if they really Uh, get interested and most of the people listening to this talk are either uh, professors or students so we can kind of motivate our students to start doing this and very soon we'll have a fantastic biodiversity information as well another portal which is uh, developed within india and there are a lot of organizations involved with it is uh, india biodiversity portal it is very similar to the earlier portal where you can photograph any plant or animal and post it and there are people who would help to identify you don't even need to know the name you just need to know the place and the um a date and who photographed it other things are curated by uh, the people if you don't know it if you know it you, you are always welcome to tell the name Uh, the third initiative that has been uh, developing uh, from the national center for biological sciences dr uh, krishna mekunte has been working on it and slowly they are developing websites for each of the each of the biodiversity groups especially in animals so they already have websites for butterflies moths dragonflies and dancer flies cicadas reptiles amphibians birds and mammals are also working on starting a few more so that's also another important um, um uh, portal where we can post our biodiversity data and get feedback from the experts so why it is important it is very uh, fascinating that even people who do not know about biodiversity can help in research so here is one example this person who just saw a kind of dead uh, marine um, organism or a fish he took several photographs of that and posted on i naturalist and when uh, so it was uh, recorded in in california so when he posted people said oh this is something called as ocean sunfish or mona mola and then when scientists started looking at more details of that when it was kind of confirmed they said how is that possible when they looked into it 
it's typically from the southern hemisphere and it was only recorded two times so far in uh, in northern hemisphere so it's it's such a rare find and then if citizen scientists were not out doing this it wouldn't have happened because it, there was such a remote possibility of scientists stumbling upon a dead uh, thing on the beach and actually trying to figure out what it was so this is the kind of importance of these um, portals and how you so it was so if you see on the screen it was previously seen only once in northern hemisphere in 1889 and now after that this is recorded for the second time in california so these these kind of amazing discoveries can be done through citizen scientists that are uh, potentially invasive species that can be recorded uh, through this kind of um, uh, recording, there are totally new species described. Someone photographed a species, and then a scientist like Dr. Vishwanath looks at it and says, "Oh, this is a new, new beetle. I've never seen it." Contacts that person. They explore. They at times go manage to collect and describe a new species. There are so many examples, even within India, that has been happening over the last eight, ten years. Um, I, I know a lot of examples with wasps, which were dis, uh, described uh, through um, citizens' photographs first and then kind of uh, collections and then uh, proper descriptions. So these are, these are the things that also pretty uh, regularly uh, happen. And uh, at, at, uh, that is a place where the citizen scientists and scientists come together and they publish this uh, scientific report. So the, this is the kind of importance of these kind of biodiversity documentation and uh, um, and the need for us to motivate more and more students or common people to do it. So I can, I would like to show quickly some of these um, websites. So just to show the biodiversity documentation that is happening. This is about butterflies. There are about 130 observations on these Ion Isolis website, every day people are adding more and more uh, uh, records here. Like here you see this particular record was just added 12 minutes back, just a fresh photograph. And if I, if I just refresh it, I might get some new. See, we are getting like these records almost every minute. Uh, for Aparna Madam, I would like to show the the Moths project. There are 133 um, uh, records, uh, about 4,000 uh, taxa already recorded on iNaturalist, and more and more of them are uh, uh, appearing. And uh, so how it is done is this is basically a record. So this particular person, Karishma, has seen this is in where is this place in uh, somewhere near Darjeeling this particular <coughs> moth is photographed and just posted excuse me and this and this person does not know what it is so that person has just described it as as uh, butterflies and moths and then someone else can then start helping. Like, for example, I can say, okay, this looks like a, a live one. So I can say this is alive. It is, it is a presence of organism. I know this is a moth, so it's a adult. And then I can also go and uh, use the <coughs> artificial intelligence tool. Or sometimes if I know the name, I can also tell the name of this uh, particular moth. So this is a, a kind of help that um, little advanced amateurs or scientists can uh, provide. And this is how these websites work. So in some sense, these are somewhat uh, Facebook for biodiversity, I like to call them. So in this, more than people, the moth or the butterfly is important character and all the things are posted around that. So. <clears throat> Very similar to that is this India Biodiversity Portal. It, this also works the same way. The interface is a little different. 
and this also has like same different photographs location who has posted it and then the information about all these details can be provided and then the biodiversity atlas website that i was uh, talking about this is slightly different this has a more expert curated approach so anyone and everyone is not able to uh, go and provide ids but uh, the identifications are uh, provided by experts only so there are uh, species uh, pages created for each of these um, uh, species and then there are photographs and then there is a distribution recorded there is status and habitat so this is how they are uh, collecting this information but anyone can <clears throat> go and submit uh, uh, observation basically here so if you take a picture you can submit them there so these are the different um, kind of avenues that are available for biodiversity documentation and then there are also some uh, cyber communities we uh, roughly call them diversity india we we have these different groups to <clears throat> on facebook and uh, whatsapp and uh, telegram where we come together and discuss about these particular organisms and teach um, uh, share and teach each other how to identify so <coughs> uh, these are the um these are basically um uh, some ideas that i wanted to put forward to all the academicians that please uh, get involved with with these things and um, uh, let us uh, let us try and uh, document all the biodiversity of india all nooks and corners let us try and cover so that is what uh, that is all i wanted to discuss and share today and thank you so much for this opportunity thank you dr parvez ji you have just yeah, explained animal biodiversity biodiversity crisis biodiversity documentation you have also <clears throat> explained various data sources biodiversity atlas of india i am very glad to express my i i want to extend my thanks to dr barveji for his excellent speech and uh, for the last section of this webinar that is vote of thanks but before that we have to just uh, take some uh, question question answer session for this webinar we have put suggestions regarding the questions and doubts of uh, on various sessions we have conducted on various topics like beetles moths and butterflies uh we also request youtube viewers as well as zoom zoom participants for the questions but uh, no question is there only single question asked by dr vijay ji barve for dr vishwanath ji hegde so i want to request dr vijay ji barve for uh, repeating the question regarding uh, the beetles and you have just asked regarding the migration of beetles uh, so that uh, dr vishwanath ji hegde can clarify your queries uh, please repeat the question sir please yes yes so the question i had was uh, we know a lot about uh, butterflies and uh, also uh, species of dragonflies which uh, take uh migration they travel several kilometers we also know that some of the um, the grasshoppers or locusts do that so i, I i'm personally not aware of any uh, beetles doing that so i would like to learn a few things about it 
ओके थैंक यू आई आई वुड लाइक टू रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर विश्वनाथ जी हेगड़े सर थैंक यू प्लीज दिस क्वेश्चन इज फॉर यू या यू यू आर ऑडिबल सर यस सर यस सो थैंक यू वरुण जी बट I am unable to answer this uh, migration of this uh, beetles because uh, I have not heard about all this, and uh, mainly we are doing the taxonomy of uh, uh, beetles, and uh, our main uh, institution is also based on the taxonomy of uh, different uh, orders of uh, insects and then uh, other animals. So, if it is possible, so I will study it and I will tell you the answer. thank you thank you dr vishwanath ji science is always full of possibilities and probabilities and uh, we hope that uh, this probability can come into existence some uh, some time later and, and that also gives some directives for the coming uh, uh, booming researchers thank you very much sir now i i, I would like to request my colleague professor vilaj ji paura for to propose vote of thanks for overall sessions so over to you power sir thank you sir it gives me pleasure to propose vote of thanks i am thankful to our patrons honorable aba saheb suresh patil secretary vidya vikas mandal sakri honorable sau manglatai patil president of vidya vikas mandal sakri i would like to thanks young and enthusiastic bhaiya saheb chandrajit patil vice president of our organization initially i would like to express my heartfelt thanks to inaugurator honorable professor bv power pro vice chancellor of kavitri benabai choudhury north maharashtra university jalgaon i would also like to extend my thanks to chief guest professor dr dl torone administrative officer vidya vikas mandal sakri i express my sincere thanks to our guest speakers dr vishwanath jigre dr aparna klavate and dr vijay barwe who has provided a knowledgeable thesis for our international webinar i am also thankful to our chairperson of today's webinar principal dr r r hire for guiding us i am also thankful to our vice principal dr anand patil convener dr s s patore head of the department dr noho power for guiding us to make this webinar a success i extend my thanks to our organizing committee national organizing committee and local organizing committee i am thankful to ipsc coordinator dr d h chawan sir dr hasin tadvi dr deepak nagrade dr dhananjay patil and dr chandrakant kadre for supporting us i am also thankful to all the participants for marking your presence in today's international webinar last but not least i must thank all teaching staff of ag patil college sakri and coordinator dr pradeep rathod for coordinating this program thank you all thank you power sir uh, for the participants please uh, submit your feedback we have provided we are going to provide uh, feedback link on youtube channel youtube link as well as on telegram group whatsapp group and on your emails after the submission of the feedback you will get your e certificate on your email thank you all thank you very